Hey, good morning. I'm Marcus, and welcome to our uh, installment this week of our blog. Got some really exciting news, and I'm joined by really a, a special guy. I've read about him. I've followed him in the newspapers. I've never met him before. Nathan Monk, welcome today. Thank you, Marcus. I appreciate you having me here. Yeah, and we're going to talk about something that we're going to get involved in. We're going to jump on your bandwagon and, and use the hard work that you do in the community and, and try to help a little bit. We're, we're announcing today that the Michaels and Booth annual Christmas caroling caravan, which we go around and sing Christmas carols and raise money and collect toys and stuff. This year, the uh, project is going to benefit, or all the proceeds are going to go to the Beacon, which is a wonderful new addition. I guess last year was your first year. It's a, a, a shelter for homeless or troubled women and their families. Uh, tremendous need in this community. Nathan, if you would, tell us a little bit about the Beacon, how you got involved in it, what it's looking like, and what we can do to help. Sure. Well, it all started out of a conversation that I had with uh, Quint Studer uh, about a year and a half ago. We were discussing the service gaps that exist in our community. So I put together sort of a little service gap analysis. And what came to the surface very quickly is how few services are available for women and families, specifically in the area of a crisis shelter, you know, somewhere that you can go if you find yourself in you know, sudden or what I call flash homelessness, you know, just homelessness can sneak up on you and it can come out of nowhere. And well, let me interrupt you sure. because a lot of the privileged people like me that have it easy don't really understand how challenging those situations can be, but more importantly, we misunderstand how easy it can happen to just average people. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's what you know to be true, right? Absolutely. Well, because what happens oftentimes is, you know, a mom has a kid that is sick and she misses more days of work than she anticipated. And that one moment can begin the cycle uh, of that crisis. You know, you miss a couple of days of work, you forget to renew your driver's license, little things like that can begin that, uh, you know, corrupt landlords that end up, you know, evicting, people, evicting people unfairly. And they don't know all of the ins and outs. They're and tell me if this is true, Nathan. I. I I've always said that what people don't understand is how little reserves and how little the resources are between success and failure. Because, and I said this more around the post-hurricane period mm -hmm. in this community. People use what, I, what, what limited resources they have available and they get right to that threshold and then it just takes a little bad luck or a little occurrence to send them underneath the water. I mean, just put them underneath the, the, the power. Absolutely. I've often spoken about how when we gauge the actual homelessness in our community, we have to not just gauge, you know, the, the hard numbers. You know, we say there's 3,000 homeless in Pensacola, but there's probably another 50,000 people that are on the verge of homelessness mm -hmm. in our community. People who, in a hurricane, house fire, uh, chronic illness, uh, suddenly, you know, that crisis hits and they are teetering right there on that precipice and any sort of you know sudden tragedy that you or I might be equipped to handle uh, they don't have that reserve like you spoke about waiting for them on the other side and it tips them right over into being into that uh, into that homeless crisis so you you were asked by Quint to take a look at it you identified some gaps and some needs in the community I'm sure there were quite a few of there those. were quite a few you know um, Transportation was a big issue, uh, proper data collection. And so we evaluated all of this information. And one day, uh, late in October, Quint called me and he said something to the effect of, you know, Nathan, if, uh, if we're not doing something, that means we're, doing, uh, we're not doing anything. And I said, what do you mean? He's like, well, let's just do something. You know, we're, we're, we know all this information. In Quint, let's in move. In Quint Studer fashion. It's yeah, like, let's yeah. just do something. Yeah, let's just do something. I said, okay. He's like, well, let's, let's start a shelter. And so I was thinking, we're talking like, we're going to put together this master plan over a year, all that. No, he meant like that day, yeah, you know. And right. so all of a sudden, you know, within a month, we had isolated a Greater True Vine Church that donated some space to us. Uh, the... Uh, American Red Cross gave us uh, some cots, and we were just off the ground running. And we didn't do uh, a lot of, you know, publicity or anything like that last year. We were just like, let's take the information that we've gathered, let's take that, you know, data, and let's compare it up to real life. And and that's exactly what we did. Two tremendous success. Well. First of all, thank you to you for the amazing effort that you put into this thing. You're making this a better place for a lot of people, and I really commend you on that. 
Um, the firm's going to try to make something happen with this Christmas caroling thing, and we're trying to get this, uh, we're going to go down there and serve a meal and make it a challenge to other law firms, try to get a number of law firms involved in that, just try to raise community awareness for this shelter. We've got the cold weather coming. Absolutely. The need is coming. We know it's coming. And uh, so you, you just let us know what we can do, and we're going to try to do it because you've really set a, a pretty unique standard for this. Well, I definitely appreciate uh, you and everyone coming out to help because, you know, without people getting involved, without us raising the bar of awareness, you know, people don't know because specifically for families, they are the invisible homeless. They are the people that are living in cars. Uh, they're living in hotels, motels, uh, bouncing back and forth between friends and family, exhausting those you know, uh, relational for, for, resources, yeah, the resources, you right. know, and, and so we've really got to change the conversation. I think that's what's so great about you letting us come on, on this blog is I don't think that most people know that in Escambia County, there are 1800 homeless youth registered in the school district, mm. you know, and when we think of homelessness, the average person thinks of the guy standing on the side of the road, holding the sign. He makes up such a small demographic of our overall homelessness in here, here in Pensacola. And so having folks like you get on board is just really pivotal for us. Well, we're going to do what we can. We'll, we'll make this a long-term relationship, but we'll take, we'll take the first step of humiliating ourselves by singing Christmas carols door-to-door -door this Christmas season. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's, it's a spectacle for sure. And we'll welcome you to join us this year if you want to, and we go door-to-door -door singing songs. And Absolutely. I'll be there. I appreciate <laughs> it. Good. Well, listen, we've been joined by Nathan Monk, and if, we, if he's got the time, we'll get him back before the Christmas caroling, and then, of course, we'll, we'll after the project, and we'll, we'll ask you all out there, you know, get involved. Find a way that you can help. The, this community is based upon all, all the people that are in it, the strong, lucky ones and the weak, less fortunate ones. We're all a part of this community. We all need to work together to make it the best place it can possibly be. So having a great guest like Nathan with all the work that he's doing in the community sets the tone. And I'm Marcus Michaels here at Michaels & Booth. If you've got suggestions, questions, or comments, give me a call. You can always reach me. I'll be happy to return your calls, emails, texts, tweets, what have you. But get out there and get involved. And thanks for watching.